Okamidoki and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, venture capital investment, wait a minute, tax credits, venture capital investment tax credits, you lived in Indiana? This is the code that sets the amount of tax credits that can be awarded at $12,500,000. The Venture Capital Investment Tax Credit Program improves access to capital for fast-growing Indiana companies by providing individual and corporate investors an additional incentive to invest in the early stage firms. Investors who provide qualified debt or equity capital the Indiana companies receive a credit against their Indiana tax liability. The Venture Capital Investment Tax Credit is established by Indiana Code 6-3.1-24. Ladies and gentlemen, this is known as transferable tax credits. Each state has a program where they allow individuals to invest in companies and receive tax credits as a result of their investment. Could potentially derive a financial benefit from a tax credit, a financial benefit. This is exactly what the banks receive when they do a write-off or a charge-off. They receive a financial benefit. Many of you are not going into court and highlighting that they received the financial benefit. If they ask you, do you have any proof of this? Thank you for saying that the court is going to grant me an opportunity to subpoena this information because it's contained in their private corporate financial records. And those records are also kept with the Internal Revenue Service. So thank the court for giving you permission to request that information via subpoena as it is by the court's own admission necessary for you proving your claim and get the subpoenas and request that information concerning your account and every other account for the last 10 years they will n I promise you they will fight tooth and nail not to provide you that financial information why? Because it will prove that they've been defrauding people for the last 10 years. So they will never provide it. So your job is to, well, the court said that I need that information. And because it's necessary for me to prove my claim, then the court must grant such a request for the subpoenaing of such information for the limited purposes of proving that this is an ongoing practice and this practice has even taken place in my case which will document that their intent was deliberate and it was without ignorance they did it on purpose ladies and gentlemen gentlemen ladies ladies and gents the only thing I can tell you is I can't tell you everything because I can't do everything for you okay let me show you for this company venture capital investment tax credit assignment form submission this is where you submit your tax credit because it's been assigned to you and that's where you send the form so that you can see tax credit assignment form this is where you submit the tax credit assignment form ladies and gentlemen transferable tax credits now what I want to do is I want to let you know it's not just Indiana every state does this many people have been questioning the tax credit issue every state does this including the federal government because our government in America I said our as an HOU our government in America is a credit based system the whole system is based on credit if you don't believe me just look up the full faith and credit clause the credit is derived from the people just understand it hold on 
most of you are not understanding that the United States has an unlimited tapping of resources, which is why they can give trillions of dollars back to the American people. Ladies and gentlemen, they cannot tax you in your personal capacity. Why? Because when the government taxes you, it's taxing itself. You are the government. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did you say? I said you are the government. It's a government of the people. Pay attention. By the people. Pay attention for the people. When I say you are the government, I mean you as in collective yous, not you as an individual. Nuh -uh. You ain't the people by yourself. You can't be a people by yourself. We are the champion, my friends. You cannot be the people by yourself. We keep on fighting till the end. Stop thinking that you are an island unto yourself. Stop thinking that the word sovereign applies to you. Yes, 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 you're the sovereign over your own house. Yeah, I got you. But this use of the word sovereign has been misapplied and misused and abused. Okay, the sovereignty rests in the people. Pay attention. We're going to go to Investopedia. Why are we going to Investopedia? Because you all need to know what's going on. What has been going on. What is full faith and credit? Now, this is not coming from me. I just typed in what you saw. I'm giving you what is general knowledge. That's why I do these videos to show you what is common knowledge and common practice. Not what I think, but what is already known. This was July 31st. This was when this was updated. Full faith and credit is a phrase. It's a legal term used to describe one's entities, unconditional guarantee and commitment to back the interest and principle of another entity's debt. The full faith and credit commitment is typically employed by a government to help lower borrower's cost of a smaller, less stable government or a government-sponsored agency. Ladies and gentlemen, if the government has the very same rights as you do to engage in commerce, then you have the very same right to use your full faith and credit to back your instruments. So don't call them our style money orders anymore. We're all right. You ain't got to call them money orders. Don't call them money orders no more. Call them exactly what they are. Remittance coupons backed by your full faith and credit. Understanding full faith and credit. Full faith and credit refers to the full borrowing power of a government to pledge to fulfill its payment obligations in a timely manner. The United States Treasury, pay attention, issues bills, notes, and bonds. If the Treasury gets to issue bills, notes, and bonds, so do you. These are all commercial instruments as a means of borrowing money from the public to fund the government's capital projects. If the treasury borrows money from the public, you are John Q. Hey, nice to meet you, John. Hey, where's where's Jane? Oh, she's right, oh, hey, what up, Jane? All right, yeah, Jane, all right, no, no, no I'll talk to you later. No, no, I don't wanna talk to you. No, no, you talk too long. No, you, Jane, you talk, Jane! See, I don't wanna talk to you right now, all right? I just wanted to acknowledge you. All right, you've been acknowledged, now move on. Okay, as I've been telling you guys for months, the government borrows from you. Those are your tax dollars, which is why they can't charge you in a court, which is why to access the court, to access government, they can't charge you no extra fees. Those are administrative fees. Those fees are being charged because it claims you owe a debt. You owe a debt. You owe a debt. The reason why all of you owe debts is because you're not discharging those debts. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, there is anger in my voice. Why are you so angry? Because these people know they're supposed to be discharging their debts. The government has been telling them to discharge their debt all of this time. And these people ain't been discharging their debt. I don't understand it. What do you mean the government been telling them to discharge their debt? They tell them about write-offs and 1099-Cs. 
And these people, they give them a corporation. I've already showed them. By the way, this is where you will find out. This is where we were the other day. I remember where we were showing people how to look up their accounts and all that stuff. And people were saying, no, you can't go there to look that mother stuff up. No, you can't do that. That's not where that, look, ladies and gentlemen, that's why you get to set up an account. Okay? You get to set up an account. Commercial bookkeeping entry system through your bank or broker. Pay attention. You get to set up an account through your bank. Open an account. Open an account. Open an account. But don't just open an account because you feel like you can open up an account. What's wrong with you people? Follow the rules. You don't just open up an account because you saw a video saying open up a Treasury Direct account. Follow the rules for opening up a Treasury Direct account. Now, <sighs> new accounts and incoming transfers are no longer available in the program for Treasury Legacy accounts. Will maintain securities customers currently hold in the Legacy Treasury Direct account until the securities mature. I've been trying to tell people for months that when you invest in a security, there is a maturity date. Normally, it's 5 to 15 years, 10 to 20 years, 20 to 30 years. It can be as high as 50 years, if depending on the contract, depending on the security. All SAT packs are securities, people. They have a maturity date. Ours is five years. Okay? We also have the ability per our contract to lessen that maturity date. And we have done so in some cases. Don't ask because that's our program how we do that. Not because you make a special request. So stop trying to rush the process, people. Learn what a security is. We put the information on our website. Learn what a security is. But you said our. I thought you said you and SACOM, this ain't you and you ain't them. That's what I said. So I ain't changed nothing. Y'all better y mind your own business. What is it? Whatever. All right. Let's get back to the reason for this video. We're showing you proof that tax credits are being transferred all the time. We're doing transferable tax credits. But we're not just transferring any tax credits, ladies and gentlemen. We're transferring written off credits that amounts to a tax credit, which amounts to a refundable tax credit. These tax credits are not coming from deductions. They're not coming from a business loss. Hello? Anybody there? Okay. Just so that you know, it's a big difference in the two. Many of you are going to try to duplicate what we're doing, and you don't have the knowledge to do so. You're going to run into a whole lot of problems. We've shown you how people are just writing our style money orders when they have been told to do their research. But they're just writing our style money orders just to be writing them and going into court and getting their butts kicked. Why? Because the courts are getting technical with them. Because they're not knowing how to explain themselves and to ask the court, wait a minute, if you're saying I can't do this, where's the proof? Don't sit up here and tell me generally. Don't sit up here and tell me that that code is violated, because what's the exception to that code? Well, I fall under that exception. Even if you won't tell me what the exception is, I fall under that exception. Because that's how I'm operating, as I am exempt from that section of the code. So I don't see no proof being provided on any record other than your word saying that I am not exempt from that section of the code. Ladies and gentlemen, if you operate in the public, you deserve to get your ass kicked in the public. It's just the way it is. You deserve a public kicking. But if you operate in a private, then technically you do deserve a private kicking. But either way, y'all don't know where y'all operating, and y'all gonna y'all gonna cause somebody's death sitting up here operating and don't know how to operate. You know what I'm saying, Vern? Okay. Now that we went here, let's go back here because we need to. 
The reason why we're going back here because we were trying to explain something and many of y'all weren't getting it as we were explaining it. Full faith and credit comes from you. Now, full faith and credit is a phrase used to describe one entity's unconditional guarantee and commitment back to the interest and principle of another entity. You are an entity under law. Go back and look at the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. Then go back and look up the legal definition for entity. You get to use your full faith and credit. That's not something that somebody gives you. This is something you already have. To have. To have. I understand. They already told you. Key takeaways. Full faith and credit is an unsecured method of backing debt based on trust and reputation. As one of the people of the United States, you have trust and a reputation. You're the only one who can kill that trust and reputation. They say, well, because you have bad debt, that shows that you can't be trusted. And that shows you have a bad reputation. No, I have bad debt because of the unlawful and illegal things that have been done. And I'm being denied my right to prove that in court. Government offers issues bonds backed only by the ability to collect taxes, only by the ability backed only by the backed only by their ability to collect taxes and other revenues in the future. The full faith and credit of the government comes from you, taxpayers. So don't shy away from being a taxpayer. That's how you get to have full faith and credit. If you using my full faith and credit, where's my return? I'm paying you taxes. Where are my benefits? I have no access to the court because you charged me twice to get even into the court. And when I get there, you ignore me and pretend I don't exist. Where are my benefits, mother? You understand what I'm saying? No, you don't. Because I've been yelling it and shouting it and you all are not getting it. It is because of your full faith and credit that the government operates. The government is the one who has lost trillions of your dollars as a group, not as an individual, but because I pay taxes, not as a group, I pay taxes individually. And because I'm forced to pay taxes, because they say it's an obligation, where are my benefits for having paid taxes? Will we keep the roads? No, I keep the roads because I pay the taxes on the roads. Not only do I pay all other taxes, but I then pay a heavier tax at the gas pump. So don't tell me that's a benefit. No, I'm paying for that. I'm supposed to receive a benefit as a result of paying. You tax me for everything. You tax me to be able to have my automobile. You tax me for gas. You tax me for everything. Where are the benefits if I'm paying for it? Why do you keep taxing me? Well, we have to maintain this and maintain that. You might have to maintain this and maintain that, but I'm supposed to have access to my government. Y'all are not giving me access. Y'all create one loophole after another loophole after one roadblock after, block after another roadblock. You keep moving the goalposts every single time I seem to get ahead. You keep moving a mutton goalpost so I can't even think about kicking a field goal or running an extra point. Okay, my name ain't Tupac. I ain't here to be throwing no Hail Marys. One quick see. I'm sorry. Because the government, wait, theoretically, because the government's theoretically, there's a theory, have an unlimited and lawful capacity to collect revenue, unlimited to collect revenue. These bonds are often considered low risk and thus carry low yields. The government's National Mortgage Association, <clears throat> the government National Mortgage Association, <clears throat> the government National Mortgage Association, pay attention. This is not a government agency. Okay? Guinea May? But anyway, it's one example of a government agency that is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Guinea May, Fannie Mae, and uh, there's another one. Guinea Mae, Fannie Mae, 
and come on now, you guys know the other one, Fannie Mae, and what's the other one? Anyway, those organizations are not government organizations. It's been proved time and time again. They're private corporations, but nah, don't take my word for it. Do your research. Do your research. You'll see that Guinea Man and Fannie Mae are not listed in the federal agency's address for withholdings. Look, understanding full faith and credit. The government borrows from the people. It's just really that simple. They tell you right that. They, they borrow money from the public. These securities require interest payments be made to lenders and investors periodically. So not only do they borrow from you, but they charge you interest. On maturity dates, bondholders expect full repayment of the face value of their securities. So they receive interest and then they receive back their full payment. To encourage investors to purchase debt issues, the treasuries are backed by the full faith and credit of the government. The full faith and credit of the government are bonds, are a means of borrowing money from the public to fund the government's capital projects, the bonds. Okay? Providing assurance to fixed income investors that expected interest payments and principal payments will be made regardless of any economic situation. The same thing with tax credits, ladies and gentlemen. This is what's going on. Go and do your research. The information is right there. La ladies and gentlemen, I really am sorry that there are people out there who don't like the style of my videos and how I do them. But who was it that said, I just don't give up? I I'm sorry. What I'm trying to say is I'm not concerned about those idiots. You see, I understand jealousy. I understand that the majority of people who have something negative to say about me have no association with me, have no interactions with me, don't even know me. So I could give up about how they feel about me. I really could give up, but I don't want to give it. Now, I have to keep myself under composure because if many of these people were standing in front of me and they came at me the wrong way and I was not having a good day, I may, I may have to lose a little bit of my faith to explain to them how I feel. But that's not me. That used to be me when I was younger. When I was in my teens, I had no problem hauling off on somebody when I was not happy with them. Go ahead. That was my reputation. That's what everybody knew me for. They called me the bull for a reason. Called me bulldozer for a reason. They called me hammer for a reason. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, that's not me no more. That hasn't been me for a long time. I've walked away from that. But there are people who want to bring that out of me. I'm so glad that I've had the four experiences, and I'm going to say this, I'll say it on record. The four experiences of being arrested, well, five times. The first time was my fault. I did that, and I turned myself in for what I did. But the other four times, they didn't have a reason. They just did it because they got pissed off at me for doing stuff like this, telling you guys their secrets giving you guys the basis of their information. Go and look. There's nobody else out there like me. Covering so many different subjects, giving you the basis for how they've done everything. Nobody else. I told them in 2017. I told them in 2012. I told them in 2005. Leave me alone. And I will stop. I gave them one final ultimatum in 2018. Leave me the, alone or I will not stop. So let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I will be respectful because my God, the God that I serve, requires me to be respectful. Okay? But what he doesn't require that I do is stop. I'm not getting this information based on me. I'm getting this information because he's the one who's allowing it. Everything I do, he allows it. Go ahead. Go ask him. And if he tells you no, he ain't allowing it, then you're a liar. Okay? Just really that simple. All right. What I'm trying to say is everything I'm doing, I can prove it. 
and you can see it backed by evidence. So that's how I know that he's allowing it. Because this video, I had no idea about this page. I had no idea that Investopedia was going to say this. I just knew that you had a right. I just knew what full faith and credit. If you don't believe me, go back and look at the last full faith and credit I did last week. You'll see that I couldn't find this information when I did that video, but this morning I said, hey, go ahead and try it one more again. But not just Investopedia is telling you what full faith and credit is. It wasn't just Investopedia that says, hey, this is what full faith and credit is. No. No. There were other hits on Google talking about full faith and credit residing in the people. Yes, of course they want to talk about the records of the court. Of course they want to talk about public acts and they want to talk about the Full Faith and Credit Act. We're not talking about the Full Faith and Credit Act. We're talking about the Full Faith and Credit Principle. It's the Pledge and Principle! Ow! Ow! Oh! Ow! Ow! It's the Pledge and Principle! Ow! I'm sorry, I apologize. I ain't heard that stupid song in a long time. Since 19, the 1930s, the American people have relied, since the 1930s, the American people have relied, since the 1930s, the American people have relied. 1930s? Are you talking about that bankruptcy, FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation? Are you talking about the 1933 bankruptcy? Ladies and gentlemen, actually, the bankruptcy did not occur in 1933. Most of you are mistaken. The bankruptcy occurred prior to 1933. It wasn't until 1933 that it was fully documented and fully accounted for. Now, full faith and credit of the federally insured deposit institutions. Reaffirmation of security of funds deposited. The federally insured deposit institutions Congress finds and declares that since the 1930s, excuse me, pay attention, go ahead and look at it, section 901, I don't know, section 901 or what, hold on, this is advisory opinions, these are regulations and acts, okay, this is Congressional House of Representatives, Resolution 290, adopted March 1982, when the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't understand. This is under Reagan. Pay attention. See? This is a letter, a copy of a letter. Your October 7, 1987 letter asks whether the full faith and credit of the United States stands behind the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. This is an attorney responding. So they quote Congress since the 1930s this is what Congress finds. The American people has relied on the Federal Deposit Insurance to ensure the safety and security of their funds and federal insurance deposit institutions and the safety and security, safety and security of such funds is essential element of the American financial system. Sense of Congress. In view of these findings and declarations contained in subsection A, subsection A findings of Congress, It is the sense of Congress, Congress don't have no sense, come on now, that it should reaffirm that deposits up to the statutorily prescribed amount in federally insured deposit and depository institutions are backed by the full faith and credit of the United States. While any funny conclusions in this matter rest with the Attorney General of the United States and ultimately with the courts, it is our opinion that title Four, I mean nine, excuse me, of the CEBA something act, banking act, the, huh, I don't know what the CEBA is, merely represents an expression of the intent of Congress to support the FDIC's deposit insurance fund should such a need arise. I need to find out what this is because that's what I do. I know it probably says it above, but as it is above, so it is blue. <laughs> anyway, I, that statement is stupid, by the way. I understand where it comes from. 
you know, make it like the model that you saw, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it, it's stupid. Uh, Office of Civil Rights. I, I didn't ask for Office of Civil Rights. Wait a minute. Hold on. We got we got to do it this way. Hold on now. There. And there. Let's see if we can get what it actually stands for. See, it says provisions of SEBA again, but I need to know what SEBA stand for. SEBA! Get on over here, boy! What what you doing? No, no, I ain't tell you to do that. SEBA, sit you down. I apologize. SEBA's always getting in trouble, y'all. Uh, it doesn't tell me what SEBA is. Uh, Committee on Banking, Housing Affairs, nope. Committee... No, but this is something act. So banking act. Uh and the best way wait, 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 wait. Nope. Nope. Doesn't give me what SIBA means. I know, I know some of y'all are yelling into the computer and you're gonna try to send me emails and all that, and that's not what I want. I'm not asking for that. It ain't that important. It's just let me see, how do I explain this? I gotta get rid of the commas. I keep hitting commas because the uh oh you put that in the wrong spot. Okay. I keep hitting comma because it's right next to the period. And you know it was a period that just decided it did not want to end. Yep. Uh and its implementation regulation. So SEBA is gonna be under Title 34 CFR, but it's still not giving me what SEBA stands for, so I'm gonna let it go because SEBA ain't my friend. Ah, the Competitive Equity Banking Act. See, I told you it stood for Banking Act, but the Competitive Equality Banking Act. The Competitive Equity Banking Act. Okay. So now that I have the Competitive Equities Banking Act, Congress attempted to shore up public confidence in deposited institutions. Why? Because this is when the savings and loan crisis was going on. If you don't believe me, go back and look. Now see, Community Economic Betterment Act. Now if you thought that's what it stood for, not according to this right here. Okay. Now, it says the abbreviation definition of terms, SEBA, Community Economic Betterment Act. So how do you have these two things going on at the exact same time? The exact same title. The exact same title. Exact same time. Because there's two things. 1987, and this one happened prior. So we have Community Economic Betterment Act, which... Uh, it does seem like this is a title that Congress would give something, but pay attention. We also have the Competitive Economic Banking Act. So let's do something. We're going we're gonna to keep you here just for a second because this is me telling you how I don't just take nobody's word for nothing, ever. I have never, not even my God, my God that I serve does not require that I operate off of just because he said so. Go ahead and take a look. He has never operated that way. Even when Abraham was speaking to him, he allowed Abraham to question him. Competitive Economic Banking Act of 1987 redefined the term bank in the Bank Holding Company Act to include any bank the deposits of which are insured by the Federal Deposit Insurance Act. Okay, so this right here is from Cornell Law. And this is August 10th of 1987. Now we have that. Now hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm using, um, and I'm actually glad it did that. I am using uh, Edge. And this, I'm going to give Edge a little bit of credit. That was nice that that pulled up exactly the way it did. 
I'm a little surprised at that. Now, the Community Economic Betterment Act, uh, if you are visiting a non-English version, don't care about that. I'm looking for the banking part of it. Because what I... Ah, see? Creative Excellence in Business Advertising, Community Economic Betterment Act, and Competitive Equality Banking Act. So it does stand for Competitive Equality Banking Act. How is the Community Economic Banking Act abbreviated? A Betterment Act. So it does stand for all three of these. Why would they make it so confusing? Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I do. When I find something that, hey, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense, or wait a minute, what does that stand for? This is what I do. And so now... This is the free dictionary. It talks about acronyms. There, this acronym has three different meanings. Three. Now, why would they do that? Why would they cause so much confusion? Because this is what they do. But I said three different definitions. Hoo-wee! Look at this. Colorado and Catholic and continuous and customer, and capital, and cost, all of them, all of them using the same acronym. Let me let you know, each of these three are directly associated with that Banking Act of 1987. Each of these three are associated with this. However, I'm going to go with the Banking Act because I do know that BA stands for Banking Act. Usually that's what Congress means when they do BA and here we have Banking Act of 1987. And so because we have the Banking Act of 1987, because they're always doing a Banking Act, ladies and gentlemen, always. But the primary Banking Act that is existing today is the March 9th, 1933, Economic Emergency Relief Banking Act. Okay? Just that simple. I'm so glad that you all understand. All right. So this video was just to explain to all of you a recap. Going to start doing that too. Going to start doing the recap so that you guys will get the main gist of these videos from this point on. This video was designed to show you that, yes, tax credits are transferable that companies have been oh I turned to the wrong one alright but we talked about the transferable tax credits that companies have been transferring tax credits for quite some time this was also designed to show you about your full faith and credit that you have personal full faith and credit as a citizen of your state now remember See, Competitive Economic Equality Banking Act. Now, in your state, pay attention to what I'm saying. In your state where you reside, you are a citizen under your state's constitution. You are one of the people of your state. Now, I know this is going to be difficult for some of you to grasp, but I want you to pay attention, please. Ladies and gentlemen, as one of the people of your state, you are part of that state. Each state of the United States combine, make what's known as the, I know this is going to be difficult for you guys to understand, united or combined states of America. So that makes you not a citizen of the United States, but part of the United States. The full faith and credit comes from the state's people, known as otherwise the public. There is no such thing as a person born in the United States. Because the United States is a collective body. 
It's a corporation of states. They're incorporated. They have come together as a group and incorporated themselves. Yes, the United States is a corporation because all government is corporation. Every government in the world is a corporation. A group of individuals coming together, even if it's a monarchy. Someone came together and said, let's do this. And then they said, wild thing. I'm sorry, <laughs> tone look, I apologize. That's what he says at the beginning of wild thing. Let's do this. Okay, anyway. Yes, I do word association. That's how I get through life. Word association gets me going. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here. We went from here to here just to prove to you. Now, this showed that, yes, tax credits are transferable. Every state does it. Every state permits it. But we're doing it federally because the federal government allows it. Okay? Now, full faith and credit clause. This document shows that they borrow from the people. They, not there. We can go to the first one, Investopedia. We took y'all to Investopedia, and Investopedia showed y'all where they, and I said y'all. I didn't say you. I said y'all. Showed y'all. Showed y'all. You know, showed enough. Shogun. Showed you all what's really going on. What is full faith and credit? Okay. When we went down here, understanding full faith and credit, this is where we get a better understanding. That the treasury takes whatever you owe it. Well, what do you owe it? Well, you owe it taxes. Well, how do you owe it taxes? Because they figure, because of your age, because of your occupation, you should be paying this much taxes per year. And so they create these things known as bonds based upon the projected taxes you owe. That's where we learned about the theoreticalness of their assessments. The treasury issues bills, notes, and bonds as a means of borrowing money from the public to fund the government capital projects but we showed you in the video how trillions of dollars are have gone unaccounted for by the government which means that there is an accountability issue well if the treasury is borrowing money from you and go and use these definitions people if the treasury is borrowing money from you do you not have the right to lend it money at interest, reasonable interest, and set the time frame for which it is to be paid back. And as trustees, they have to. Why? Because they're obligated. Why? Because you do it as a member of the people, a member of the public. Now, hold on. Fall 56 and 2848 are necessary because you don't have control over that entity that they created. So get control over that entity. It's been given to you. And then start operating that entity as a, pay attention, a sole proprietorship. Okay? Start operating that entity as a sole proprietorship. Yes, you can use your 98 series number, but 98 series number is set up as a trust. Use it as a sole proprietorship. You can go back and look at the 1041. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, I know I just gave you a lot of information, a lot of information. Like I said, there are people out there who want to contradict what I'm saying, but they provide no proof. They only provide words, just a bunch of words, talking. And when you see a video where somebody is just talking, whether they're talking about me, against me, or for me, when they're just talking and they're not backing up what they're saying, you make the choice as to whether or not you should listen. The problem with our world is we have been sitting here listening to people tell us what things are, how things are, and the way things are. I'll be doing a video right after this. Wasn't even supposed to be doing this one for this long. This video literally was supposed to be about five minutes. That first five minutes, go back and listen. How I was get, just getting ready to shut it off, but I made a comment and I had to back up my comment. That's why my videos are so long. Because if I say something, I have to prove it. I can't just let it ride. So many people don't prove what they say I prove what I say so you may not like my videos but because I'm devoting so much time to back up what I'm saying to prove what I'm saying and to educate you 
You better appreciate what I'm doing. Hey, gotta go. 50, 45 minutes. Adios.